So will you be hosting it too, the show? I am the host. Ah, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I love game shows. Keep it in, keep it all in house. Yeah, and on top of that, like I've I've been a huge fan of game shows since I was like a kid. I would just watch all the game shows. What are some of your favorites growing up? Um, I, I really to. like Jeopardy. Okay. I like all Classic trivia. Jeopardy, like yeah. I like trivia type of games. Um, I liked Double Dare. I liked games that had like obstacles to it. Mm-hmm. Um, Wheel of Fortune. Like anything that kind of was like, okay, use your brain. Let's figure out puzzles. I really about like who that. wants to be a millionaire. That was pretty cool. Yeah. That was pretty cool. I was thinking of adding that type of element, but then we decided the switch up was like What's the, the is there a cash prize? And So yeah, so <laughs> obviously for pilot season there's going to be like, you know, BS prizes. Like right. you know, just to drive the point. It's gonna be a prize because it's only one winner, like right. for each ep- episode. Um, there's going to be a prize, probably something like a freaking a gas Starbucks card. Starbucks gift or card or something. Like, yeah. Something really ch- cheap Good, or if I can get still, like um, like companies to like want to give me something and that'll right. be the gift, but that's just to kind of fully show cool for the, the pilot. concept. Yeah, you'll get the idea And then across. when we get somebody behind it, like we got the money, now you can win like a thousand dollars or more or whatever. How often are you thinking it's going to, so let's say you tell it to revolt, you're thinking it's going to be like a weekly thing? like just Yeah, like I want it to be like a Friday night game show. That could vary. I see that. Thank oh, you. Yeah. I see it too. Yeah. I'm really excited. Like as much as I'm a screenwriter and I'm usually like, doing like scripted series right. or like movies that's like that is what i'm really excited about yeah because the thing with that is with scripted stuff it's like i feel like those are like passion like passion like passion projects. projects but like a good game show could be like a good money maker like yeah, you know what I mean? it's like yeah. certain stuff is like, just like good like you may not be into the topic of the sitcom and stuff but like certain stuff that's just like entertaining yeah just, especially what i told you about it like that's the that element of surprise where people are like, yeah. what? And everybody like writes, every, like the whole, everybody's kind of like a creative now. So everybody kind of does things mm-hmm. and it's like self-produced. So everybody has like sitcoms, but I don't know anybody making a fucking game no, show. Me either. And you already have the means to actually execute it well too. Yeah. So it's like, I'm it's really good this wasn't your first thing you've ever done. So it's like, now you know you just... Yeah. Get a team, you know, shoot yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, like, we're adding people to the team as necessary, but it's like, okay, guys, I want to do this. Yeah. They're like, all right, what? Awesome. I'm that person who's always like, so how much can we do for free? Yeah. Before we talk about money, yeah. how much, like, how many resources can I pull to save money up front so that way, like, if I have to pay for something, I can better set the budget. Right. You know, like, okay, we got the we got the location locked in. Great. Yeah. I just saved a ton of money right. by not having to rent a garage. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. How um are you typically successful? Like in are you like a good yeah people person getting things for free? <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm really good at bartering. Yeah. Um and because I love what I do so much, I never make it about money. Mm-hmm. So naturally I think the people that gravitate toward me are also very passionate about it and we just want to put out a good project. Yeah. And it's like if we can make money off it, great. But if we just put out something super dope, then we all got something to show. Like, oh, look at that. That was cool, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody needs a resume and they're always like, How do I get involved? Like, yeah, exactly. You know, so I'm like and the opportunity comes for money to be involved, absolutely. There always is. And like I'm always kinda like referring them to paid jobs, but I'm all about the good barter. What okay. can I get for free? Right. All right. So we're going to like uh, unofficially start this interview now. All right. You guys just heard about the switch up. Yeah. You know, this is a exclusive you're getting. I didn't even know about this. Yeah. Danny Coleman's uh, show that is in the working. So be on the lookout for that. But yeah, this is another episode of Taking Nails Podcast. It's your boy St. Uno back again for another one. And uh, introduce yourself and tell the people who you are. I am Danny Coleman. Want to know more? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Danny Coleman. I am an actress, a writer, director. Sometimes I'm a producer, uh, a serial entrepreneur. You could say that. Okay, cool. Glad to have you on the show, Danny. Um, we were talking about some of the uh, other ventures you have that aren't as creative. Um, Gear. Do you want to just start with those? Because I think it's always good to like yeah. show the multiple aspects of an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. So I have an Airbnb business. 
and I have a few air well a couple Airbnbs I'm getting ready to get an additional Airbnb okay. so by the time you guys see this I can say I'll have a few mm -hmm. Airbnbs here in the city of Atlanta I also do brand revamping for social media so if you have a brand and you're like Eh, it's not growing. What can I do? Mm -hmm. I basically sit down with you and we go through everything on your page from top to bottom, the name, the bio, the highlights, the page, everything. And I'm like, okay, this is good. This can be improved. This needs to go. And then I give you examples of other pages that are like same field as you, but doing way better. Like right. they've already gotten 30,000 followers and they're super successful. Okay, so let's see how we can implement some of the common things on their page into yours. So I do that, uh, create gifts for companies and people. Okay, talk more about um, the gifts. What is, you kind of just scaled over that, but that's, uh, not, a, that's not a little thing. Yeah, <laughs> so if you're ever using social media, which we all do, yeah. and you see like the little person, like animated sticker situation in the corner, of the story, I created those, specifically black girl gifts. Um, what happened was I was using gifts a lot. I, I like them, I think they're cool. And I would type in certain keywords and like nothing would pop up. Or it'd be like cartoon characters that had nothing to do with like, like yes, you know, like or yeah. period. Like stuff that like us women in the black culture say, but right. I'm, I would like type it in and nothing would pop up. Right. And I was like. Which is hard to believe now, I feel like. Right. And yeah. I'm just like, these words are so common, like nothing's popping up. Or if I would type in like something, it would be like a couple celebrity faces like NeNe Leaks, like some of the housewives. And I'm like, mm -hmm. eh, no, that's not really giving what I'm trying to get. So when I uh, seen there was an open space for it, crazy enough. And I hope everyone who's watching this take note of two things. For three months, yeah. I asked every graphic designer, every illustrator, Every animator, every editor I knew if they knew how to do that. And it was almost like they had never heard of such a thing. They was like, no, I don't know. When was this? This was in 2020. What? That's they did crazy. not know how to do it. Yeah. I would literally put the gifts that were available on a thing and say, do you know how to create these? Yeah. No. Everyone told me no. For three months, I asked around. So what I usually do when I ask someone how to do something or if they can do something and they can't or they can't deliver it in time, I take it upon myself to learn how to do it. Right. So when I kept running into people who like really had no idea, like, no, I don't know how to make that. Like, I don't even know where to start. I did my research and did more research and I started playing around with like different websites, different software programs and I figured it out. Hmm. And then I was like, okay, now I figured out how to make them. How do I get them into Giphy? so I can find them on Instagram. Right. That was a whole different process. Right. A chain of emails until I got to the person who actually started Giphy. Wow, yeah. just through emailing? A lot of emailing. Okay, like I can say, cause I didn't even think you could. It was a lot of emailing. Okay. Well, because I presented it to them like, I have a business concept that I think you guys are gonna love and no one's doing it. Right. Because it was proof. Like I would type in certain things, no, it would not pop up. Yeah. So I was like, okay. So I kept on emailing back and forth until I finally got in contact with the right person. They told me exactly what needed to be done, how it needed to be done. Started with like a kind of like trial and error situation. Mm -hmm. I went live with my first set of Giphy's on October 23rd, like just to test out if I could actually find them in the system. Mm -hmm. And October 26th, I went live like Publix where anybody could search them. And uh, 270 million uses later, here we are. Here we fucking are. Mm -hmm. So how do like, how does that work? Do you get paid like every time somebody uses one, or is it like a do you get paid up front and then? They uh, nah, it's it? a little. It's kind of like how with YouTube views works. You get like a, a penny per right. view type of okay, vibe. like a percentage. It's yeah, one yeah. of those things. Like, like it's, it's, yeah, it's not even a penny to yeah. be honest with you when you break down the number. Right. It's not a whole lot of money, but yeah. it's super cool as like a passive income. Yeah. And it's like culturally very point zero 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 three of you know this yeah per every like million right they didn't actually start paying attention until i got to a million mm. but you said how much like 260 million uses right 270 as of like yesterday 
Congratulations on that. Thank you. So like, and that came from, you weren't like a, in the graphic world or? Not at all. You were just like, you just wanted to use them and they weren't They around. were not there. So I seen a space. I was like, okay, there's these, what I'm looking for is not there. How can I create this to be there? Because I feel, I thought it was something cool. It was one of those like million dollar ideas where right. I was like, I think it'd be really cool if I could like find it. But with most of my ideas, I usually use myself as the guinea pig. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I didn't really know how to make them quite yet. So I was, I wasn't like asking people, "Hey, can I take a video of you and try something?" I thought that would be weird. Yeah. So I just kind of like set up a tripod and ring light, and I would do stuff, or I'd get my friends to like hold the camera for me, and like they're like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "It'll make sense in a minute. Just, just take a video real quick." Hmm. And that was it. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, do you like? Do people like? Are people aware that you like do this? Like, I feel like that's a now, now yeah. Now. now they are because I've opened my services to do them for other people. Ah, so you create gifts for people. So let's yeah, let's dial it back. When I started getting a lot of numbers, like mm -hmm. I think when I reached like two million, mm -hmm. um, kind of went in and Giphy gave me like my own sub platform within their bigger platform. Okay. So that's how the negotiations of the point zero zero whatever percent. Giphy is a company itself. Yeah, they just got purchased by Facebook. Wow. Yeah. You should get like so you should get like a raise or something, right? <laughs> Probably something like that eventually. Yeah. You know, Thanks. it's kind of like it's kind of like free flowing. It's kind of like there's a, a tiny way to monetize it, but you have to start making so many numbers that it makes sense. Yeah. Once I got it, most people who can create Giphys don't get into like the three million dollar view, three million views range, yeah. or. 200 million or 270 million like right. it's so many uses that they were like okay so you're on to something so who's like is there like a a michael jordan of giffies would that be like who is there somebody who's like 10 billion giffies yo it's crazy because i i i don't know i would assume <laughs> like the gifts of kim kardashian are like the most but she didn't like make she didn't make them no herself. she didn't make them it's just other people make them of her she probably doesn't even know they're there until she looks up her name and sees them there's not like a Giphy industry where you guys like. Maybe some type of tech convention I haven't gone to yet. I mean, I'm only I'm not even a year old in this business. Right. So I don't even know. I don't, I don't, I don't you know. Just just like it kind of took it. off bigger than I expected it to. So I don't. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just like, October 26th will make one year. So I have really? no idea. So is this kind of like, like pandemic induced? Were you just kind of bored and like? Uh no, not, not really. even like. <laughs> Like this was October of last year. So it was like September of last year when I was kind of like, I'm looking for this. It doesn't exist. Maybe I can see if someone can make it. Right. I asked everyone for three months straight. I even, and I'm going to go in my archives and prove it on my can social put the media. Up back there. I went on my social media back in, I want to say September or August of last year. Uh -huh. And I put the giffies that didn't, my giffies didn't exist yet. I put the gifts that were available up there and I said, does anybody know how to make these? No one said anything. And you said, fuck it. I'm going to learn how to do this shit <laughs> myself. And I just started playing on the computer, YouTube <clears throat> University. Like, it's got to be a graphic designer on YouTube who knows how to do it. Right. Did a little YouTube research and kind of got bits and pieces of the information, but no complete. Like, do this in this order and this and this. Then the loophole is you got to have this, this and this. And then it was like all these things. Mm -hmm. so I kind of was trial and error for like a month and then I got it. It was like, oh, it's on. Okay. Word. So you're like, you're like, you're kind of like, you're like a serial entrepreneur that's not only creative, you're like businessy too. Like, did you oh, go to yeah. school for any, what did you go to school for? Yeah, if, if I went, went to school, school for business marketing. Okay. I was going to say, cause you're not like, <laughs> yeah, you're like a kind of double edged. Yeah. Sword. Yeah. I went to school for business marketing and, and fashion merchandising. Mm. with a minor in journalism okay. so it was always my dream that i was going to work for a fashion magazine or be like a buyer for a boutique mm. like i wanted to do something really related to like fashion arts music like journalism side that was my thing that i wanted to do and then it never really manifested in that realm right. like i got tossed into the film industry like a week after i got out of school how so by accident my friend was like Hey, we need a PA on this production, blah, blah, blah. 
I didn't know what a PA was. <laughs> I was kind of like, okay, yeah, I can do it. Yeah. She was like, yeah, you'll just be like printing papers, getting coffee, making sure the talent stays where they're supposed to be, blah, blah, blah. Now, I knew I wanted to be an actress. I didn't know that, but mm -hmm. I, I seen that as my way of getting behind the scenes and kind of seeing how things work. Because prior to that, I had done like high school plays and like middle school plays, and I had always been involved in the arts and performing arts that way, mm -hmm. but I had never done anything film related. So when the opportunity came, I took it, right. even though I didn't know the job. Like I literally like went on YouTube and was like, so what is a production assistant? Mm -hmm. And they told me, I was like, oh yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Got on set, pretended I knew what I was doing and kind of just worked my way up. Genius. Mm -hmm. So um, like, how did you, now you're saying you're doing acting, directing. Did that all stem from the connections made as a PA? Yes. So working on set on the production side, mm -hmm. a different friend was like, yo, we're creating this web series. And she was like, I think you'd be perfect. You should come audition. And I was like, I don't know. And she was like, no, seriously. Like this character was like written for like you. Not really. But she was like, this character is definitely you. Like, yeah. you guys literally talk the same, act the same. I think you'd be perfect for it. Guess I was, because I got it. And then ever since then, I was like, oh, yeah, I like this. I can do both. I can do, like, behind the scenes and in front of the camera. And in front of the camera, right. Yeah. Cool. Um, would you, do you think one of, do you think the fact that you're business and creative helps? Do, the, do those things help each other, or do you think they take away from each other? They absolutely help each other. Okay. So you would encourage more creatives to be more business minded and vice versa? Yes. I would definitely encourage more business minded people to be a little more open minded and, and being creative with how they do business. Mm. And I would definitely encourage creatives to learn how to handle business, learn how to negotiate, learn how to find your leverage point. Like, all right. See, that's, is, some, that's a school term. Right? Yeah, Le leverage like leverage point. point. Like, <laughs> I can tell you learned that in class uh, somewhere. Like, you know, like, okay, for example, my leverage point is my giffies, 270 right. million. Right. That's a huge number. Right. Like, I'm not even bragging. Like, that's such a high number. Right. I can use that as leverage. Like, I created something, <clears throat> and my business savvy of knowing how to put key terms in mm -hmm. got it to this number. Right. Because you could put a gif in the system with no key terms, and nobody would ever find it. They wouldn't even know what to look for it under. Right. But, like, you know, SEOs, like search engine optimization, yeah. giffies work that same way. Mm. So you put like keywords in and then somebody could type in hi. Right. And if you registered hi with one of your gifts, then every time they type in hi, it'll pop up on that page with all the hi gifts. Right. So, you know. Yeah. So we're like in the age where everything's all about numbers. So I feel like that's really important because when people look for a talent, it's not always just about, like, especially nowadays where everything's yeah. about popularity. It's not just like, oh, is she, can she act really well? Is she like... Look, it's like, does she bring in numbers? Are you a full package? What do you do? Yeah. Right. People are like, really just want to see if you can bring your audience to their yeah. audience. Numbers so, are leverage. Yeah. The numbers fact, are leverage. Leverage points. So the fact that you, if you can get those numbers in any way, shape, or form, you, the fact that yeah. you can get them. Yeah. It's kind of all that matters. Yeah. Because, I mean, analytics are everything. Yeah. That's pretty much kind of what I teach with my branding revamping. Like. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. I actually wanted to talk more about that so with the branding revamping thing are you like you don't actually run people so is it more like a you teach them how to do it you're not doing it for them yeah right? i'm not doing it for them okay. I do, that's a lot i, guess I that's don't a have lot. time to run listen i have three social media pages of my own right. i do not have time to run anybody else's but i sit down and kind of help them decide what they even want to sell like mm -hmm. they're already selling stuff but like what are you trying to present to the people who come to your page for the first time ever you know, like mm -hmm. in 10 seconds, they're going to get off your page if it's not showing them anything worth staying on. So we kind of like break down everything. Like, is your name easy to spell? Is it easy to find? Mm -hmm. Are you called Juicy Bubble Butt with a bunch of underscores? And now right. they got to figure out how many underscores. Like, if I can't stand underscores. People are lazy. I'm like, people are lazy. If you have a business, any kind of creative Instagram, just keep it simple keep it all letters yeah. i feel like and i'm not like a marketing expert yeah by any no means, but i at least know that i'm like just i can't <laughs> wait for people to hear that because i drive that point all the time yeah. i'm like you got to think about it this way social media has given everyone a a, a, a sort of adhd 
Yeah. You know, I was like, it started with Vine. Remember Vines were six oh, seconds? Oh, shit, yeah, that was And crazy. people got used to watching a whole whatever in six seconds. Yeah. Then we got Instagram, slide, uh, reels, whatever, yeah. 15 seconds. So now everything is between six and 30 seconds. Commercials, slides, yeah. entertainment. YouTube ads. YouTube, everything is so like, I right. seen a three second YouTube ad the other day. It yeah. literally zipped across the screen. I was like, it was over? And those are kind of the best ones because you not, they're not as annoying. I feel like right. the longer one is 30 seconds. Yeah, I'm like, wow, like, I can't wow. wait 30 seconds to get to my video. Yes. Whereas the three second one is like, I appreciate you not right. wasting Right, so because of that and because social media is now a part of everyone's life and it's been around for a while, mm -hmm. Vines are like, I don't know, 10, 12 years old at this point. Don't say that. I, I swear they are. I feel old as shit. I was well, then so do I. I. <laughs> I swear Vines are like 10 years old at least. No, you're right. That's Because actually... I've had my Instagram... I'm on my second Instagram. Yeah. So my first Instagram page was like 10 years ago. Yeah. You're like, oh, so that's I'm like Vine was before Instagram. Were you Instagram. big on Vines? Were you like, no, oh, okay. I never made a Vine in my life, no. but I knew what it was. Yeah. Like Vine, Snapchat, all of that. So it's like, when you think about the fact that like, we're in a social media world yeah. where like people's attention span is short, you know, it's like your page needs to grab their interest quickly. Your bio needs to make sense. Your mm -hmm. name, like. If people have to think about it, they are leaving. leaving. They are lazy. We are lazy consumers lazy of consumers. everything. Just hear that and don't get mad about it. Just yeah. take it as facts. Yeah. And lazy consumers. Yeah. Okay. This is a good segue uh, into grabbing attention. Your series. He loves it here. Oh, he loves it here. <laughs> Talk about that because the concept, the name, it's very... Wait, draws you in they love it here a matter of fact i'm gonna oh i'm gonna do you something special i'm gonna let you see the first three episodes just you though you okay can't share it i'm gonna let you see oh, i can't put it in episodes. here depends when you're releasing this okay we'll yeah. talk we'll talk yeah yeah yeah. depends but when I... you're releasing this we might can work that out okay. but i'm gonna let you see them here okay so you have them done already yeah they love it here yeah okay well we first first let's month. talk about he loves it here because yeah. this and then we can go he loves it here uh it's actually based off of this character that i accidentally created while playing around in the gym with my friend Kelly. I will never forget this. It was April of this year. Oh, wow. You I move, move fast. I like that. I move quick. I do too, yeah. <laughs> I move fast. Once I, 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 you, oh, can't, you can't be slow out here. If I come up with an idea, I have to start acting on it within two weeks or it disappears. Yeah. Like, not even intentionally. I'll be like, wait, what was that thing I wanted to do? I don't know. It'll come back later. Yeah. So, it was April. I'm in the gym with my friend playing around. I gave her my phone. I was like, oh. I want you to do something. She's like, okay. She doesn't work in film at all. She's not in entertainment. I was like, take the camera, curve around this way. And when you get to my side, I'm going to say something funny. I didn't know what I was going to say. I was just playing around. <laughs> right. And I'm like, oh, hi, don't mind me. I'm just practicing how fast I'm going to run from your man this summer. And it took off. I posted it on my story. <laughs> This is how he loves to hear started. Yeah. I posted it on my story and my friend who is like, has like a ton of followers. He was like, holy shit, you need to make this a thing. <laughs> like, that's all he said to me. Like in one line, he's like, holy shit, you need to make this a thing. I was like, I was just playing. He was like, yeah, no, make this a real, like right now. <laughs> Made it a real and it like psh, took off. Everybody was like, Danny, oh my God, this is yeah. so funny. Yeah. So for like a week and a half, I was putting out skits, like little, like, Oh, hi. Uh, don't mind me. Your man was hungry. So I make him some food. Like, <laughs> I would say some like really like wildly disrespectful thing. Right. Um, I even did one with somebody's baby. <laughs> I didn't know that. You go the extra mile. Yeah. <laughs> like, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to see them. Like they're still on the page. Cause I was like, I'm not going to take them off. Right. Cause I want people to see where this started. Okay. So it started right. as me playing around. And then Another friend of mine was like, yo, this needs to be a series. I really want to see like what's going on with this character. Right. And I was at the time I wasn't thinking about the series, but I was like, okay, um, how can I do this? Cause I have like a ton of things going on. And I was like, I can make it a micro series, like super short three minute episodes. Perfect. Yeah. So, but I didn't want to keep the skit thing going. I wanted it to be more, I wanted the, the web series to be more like, a story you know mm -hmm. grab people's attention so I called my team and was like I got this idea and they was like all right you got a script I was, it was a, this was a Tuesday they were mm -hmm. like you have a script I was like no but I'll have one to you by Sunday mm -hmm. so Tuesday I started writing Sunday I had all five episodes written and I sent them out to my team my DP my producer it was like what do you guys think they was like all right so when we shooting this I was like yes 
Okay, so have you written anything before this? Yeah. Okay, so you were. Yeah, this is my. Experience. He loves it here. Was my fifth project. My oh, first. Yeah, okay. my first project ever was a short film called Finding Sunshine, and mm-hmm. it is about a. It shows a young woman overcoming her bout with depression and how she did it, right. and how at the end she found her sunshine. Mm-hmm. So I actually like it was my first film ever, first time writing a script ever, and I put it in a film competition and won. What? What film competition? It, well, it was a film competition. Um, it was like a... Oh, I don't even remember the name of it at this point <laughs> now. That was 2019. Yeah. Um, but it was like a short film competition. They yeah. had all these guidelines. Yeah. So it was, a cha- it was a film challenge. Okay. And it was like, it has to be under five minutes. You have to have this type of shot. You have to say this line. It was like a, a mm. true competition. Yeah. And I took those instructions. It was like, oh, we put it in there. And it won. They was like, this was the best rendition of all of these things. Like, people made sci-fi versions and all different stuff, but I, I made mine a, a drama. A drama about depression. Yeah, which is a relatable thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I was going to ask, it, it sounds like you just kind of stumbled upon uh, the character. There was no, like... No. No, like... No, well... <laughs> yeah. I stumbled upon I, I stumbled upon the character. I never gave her name mm-hmm. until I started writing the web series. Right. Now, I will say me even playing around saying, Oh, you know, hi, whatever. Yeah. I was at the time I was getting a lot of married and unsingle men in my DM. Right. Okay, I can say because it Art comes from something. <laughs> All of my art comes from a place of right. reality at some point. Right. But I was playing around, but like the reality was like, yeah, I was getting a lot of DMs from guys and I'm looking at their page and I'm like, bro, you have a two month old baby. Please mm-hmm. goodbye. Yeah. So, like, so, what is this? Okay. So, in real life, you don't condone for actually, quote unquote, home wrecking. No. Um, and a, see, that, speaking of, yeah, he loves it here. It's not about home wrecking, Correct. by the way. Yeah, <laughs> educated. No, it's just so funny, like, because when people think of side chick, they think of home wrecker. <laughs> right. So let's go back a little bit. When I decided to make the web series and mm-hmm. I started thinking, like, about, okay, how do I want to do this? In my mind, similar to with my game show, I'm always thinking of how I can turn the thing turn it on his head and make it be like oh wait we weren't expecting that yeah so with he loves it here i was like you know what i really enjoy breaking the fourth wall and i want to tell this story from the side chick's perspective Mm -hmm. and kind of serve like bring in the element of cop well the comedic element from the character of me like talking into the camera and giving advice to the woman like your man said your cooking needs help (laughs) blah 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 um, I wanted to maintain that element, but make it on a more realistic type of vibe and feel. Mm-hmm. And um, so when I started writing it, I was like, oh, let's tell this from the side chick's perspective, but have her break the fourth wall and still say something like super sarcastic. That's kind of like funny, but not like funny shade. Like, yeah, oh, he lied and told you he was at work, but he wasn't right this is a really good takeout like (laughs) you know like just saying something like super sarcastic like that was so shady and unnecessary yeah but at the same time people love that shit (laughs) yeah people love it people love it so uh it turned into that uh the series finale is actually based on a real life situation but not mine i was gonna say who's real life not mine (laughs) no not mine um so in the series, basically, I remember I was at the gym one day and a girl who goes to my gym, I we follow each other on Instagram. So I seen on the page that weekend, she had like went to a wedding. And so she's telling us about it. She's like, yeah, everybody was mad that I was there. And I was like, why? Because you were white? She's like, no, because I used to sleep with the, the groom. I was like, what? I'm like, were you invited? She was like, no, I kind of invited myself. What? And in that moment, I was like. That's the finale. That's the finale. <laughs> that is the finale. I was like, that's the finale. That like at that at that moment, I think I only had like half of episode four written, mm-hmm. and I knew I wanted it to be like a limited series, five episodes type of thing. And I was like, yeah, that's the finale. Okay. That's the finale, and I kind of just took it, and then like three weeks later, we started filming it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, is is he loves it here? Are you? Is it? advocating for side chicks is it just showing a light is it making fun like i want to i want an honest 
take <laughs> from the creator? Like, are you just a businesswoman who's just having fun and poking? Or is it like, no, nah, I'm really trying to show society something about themselves. Like, talk to me. All of the above. Okay. That's the so, same answer. So, <laughs> I, I thought it was... Um, something unseen before so from the business side of it i was like okay this is going to stand out because you see people you see a lot of rom-coms you see a lot of shows about relationships and there may be an element of cheating in the in the relationship in the show Mm -hmm. but you never see it from the perspective of the side chick it's always shown from the outside of the husband and wife and the wife being mad or the husband being mad right it's never shown from the perspective of the side chick right you know and then there's this misconception that the side chick wants to steal the man, <clears throat> excuse me, steal the man and take your place. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't. So I wanted to write it like that. Like, why would she want to take your place? You're getting cheated on. Right. Wow. That's a, you know, that's a good point. So do you think there's like a, a, <coughs> a sense of like safety in that kind of almost like, like, I don't have to like just keeping it casual. Like, so I've heard, like yeah. I've, I've heard from a lot of women who have successfully played the side chick role for years, mm-hmm. say, they like it that way because they feel like they get the truth and the honest out, the honest out of him. Like, mm. he doesn't have to lie about where he's going because you know he has somebody to go home to. Right. You know where he's going. And um, they mentioned, like, I've, I've heard... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> I've heard them mention that, like, it's easier. It's carefree. There's right. no strings. Even if there's emotions involved, there's no delusion that suddenly you're going to be the wife like why would i want to ever be that right look what he's doing to you so you actually it sounds, sounds like you have a good amount of you did your research you know, i you did really i speak in. to a lot of women um i watch a lot of tv i'm <clears throat> right. very much like in the mix of life with people so i'm always like observing and paying attention to how people think both men and women mm-hmm. you know and yeah that was it <clears throat> Perfect segue into they love it here. Not that I know what it's about, but you said oh, men and women. So they love it here. Break that down for us. Well, if you loved, he loves it here. You're going to love. They love it here. So by episode two of he loves it here, I knew I wanted to do a season two. Okay. But once again, I wanted to turn it on its head. So I made season two more of a spinoff. Where ah. we now, so the premise of the whole show is basically shining a light on the different dynamics of modern day situationships. Right. So it's not just me and the married guy, it is my friends too. So you get to meet four other people and their situationships. And some of them are married, some of them are getting cheated on, some of them are cheating mm. with. You know, so right. I'm like, yeah, it shows all different types of side pieces. I love mm, it. So you're kind of just like, it's not going to be around one person per se. It's no. an anthology series. So every episode is, oh. in the first two episodes, you get to meet all of the friends. Mm. But every episode after that, you are going to see, it's going to be a spotlight in on what that particular friend situation is. Right. Yeah. And um, how is it, do you have it all written already? Like. Is it all ready to go? It's in, we have one more episode to edit. We have filmed oh, it. Oh. We are releasing that in September. Play around. Oh, yeah, you I said don't. you were going to show me. I forgot. Yeah, I'm going to show you the first three episodes. I have them on my phone. Awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah. You don't play. Okay, so you're serious. You kick ass. Who are some <laughs> of your... I was going to ask. I was going to do the really obvious, like, did Issa Rae inspire you? So I'm glad you actually brought it man, up before I did. I love Issa, man. <laughs> yeah, so talk about, like, the, like... Where you see, do you see yourself kind of doing that or yes. any different? Yes, Issa walked so I could fly. <laughs> Facts. Seriously, like I, I so admire like how she started from like nothing and like didn't even know what she wanted to do, but she, she seen something in herself. Like I really love the fact that with Misadventures of an Awkward Black Girl, right? Mm-hmm. The production quality on it is crap, <laughs> right. right? But it's But so, that's what makes it so... It, it's so raw Jeez. and it was like it was really her it was really her being awkward as hell like yeah. she had to grow into like this superstar celebrity sexy isa thing yeah. like i just loved it i loved watching it from the very beginning like wow she went from youtube bad lighting horrible sound <laughs> ah to like empire like she has an actual production empire right and i feel like you 
you kind of do that. Not to say that you're like have bad lighting and stuff, but like the fact that you don't wait, you don't. Cause I feel like a lot of people wait for like this whole perfect storm. It will thing. never be perfect. It will never fucking be perfect. I love yeah. that. I'm not gonna lie. I saw it. I, I I told you, but they don't know. I saw an interview. That's how I got hip to you. And that was one of my favorite things you said. Cause I feel the same way. I'm like people always waiting around it's just yeah. excuses like perfectionism and stuff i just feel like you're just you're, yeah you just gotta it's, it's go. no such thing as perfect yeah even now like i look at stuff i look at he love it here and be like oh hey shit i did yeah and but all it did was make me be that much more like like a stickler for certain things going into they love it here right so i was just like improve. no yeah this Same has here. to be right that yeah. has to be right like i even realized i kind of fucked up in setting up this interview but this is a new format so we're gonna we're gonna work our way around it and it's gonna be cool. So, yeah, I, um, I, feel, I feel you. Yeah. yeah, so that was it. They love it here. I'm really excited about that. Just because it kind of explores, there's no one side of being a side chick. <clears throat> and mm. I feel like- Is there any side dudes in? Yes. In? Okay. Yeah, and there are here? side dudes. Right. There are side whip. There are married people. Right. There are unmarried people. It's just a whole. There are people sleeping with neighbors. Are there any? Is there anyone who just has a regular monogamous faithful relationship? Nope. <laughs> Boring. Boring. <laughs> no, and this I just television people. I just wanted it to show because, like, I feel like because social media is like our sixth finger now. Like, Ooh, I've never heard that. Phrase. Like, it's there. Like, it's it's an our annoying thing finger. that's like if you're born. Think about it. If you're born with a sixth finger. You'll probably get used to it, but it'll be kind of weird to the people on the outside looking in. Mm. And it's like something like, it's just there. So it's always there. Like our phones are our sixth finger. It's yeah. just attached to our hand in an aggressive way for aggressive no way. reason. Yeah. Like, you know, and I just feel like with options being plenty and access being easy, you know, I'm not saying that everyone does, but I just wanted to showcase like, it's a lot going on in this world and kind of spice up the way in which it's delivered. Cause I feel like on TV, we see the same type of cheating scenarios in any TV show or movie. Right. It's either the woman cheating or the man cheating, but we never really see the why, or it's like some really blah reason why. Yeah. I just wanted to show like, you know, uh, the sad thing is, uh, my character is not in it much. Oh, Oh, you'll see enough though. Okay. You'll see, you'll see enough to say, okay, you know, questions from he loves it here have been answered, but yeah, it's more so about my friends. Okay. But you still have, you still wrote the whole thing and it's still your, I wrote, it's still my baby. Your brainchild. Yeah. Okay. Facts. What, um, the name of the podcast is taking L's. What was like the biggest L or like hurdle you had to overcome in any of your creative endeavors. It doesn't have to be in just he loves it here, but just as being a creative serial yeah. entrepreneur. Taking what was the biggest L's. L. And how'd you what'd you learn from it? Wow, now I gotta find an L. Yeah. You're pretty like bulletproof. That's why I even forgot to ask that question. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. <laughs> like, sometimes I'm so hard on myself and I feel like I can do more, I can I can do better. But when I really think about like the span of the past two years, because mm -hmm. I've done all of this in the past two years. Right. My first film was 2019 to now. Jeez Louise. Yeah, so it's just like, I've done so much and I've kind of been on a steady climb. I don't know if it's been a L, taking L's, ooh. Let me think about that. <laughs> Cause I'm a winner. All I do is He's win. a winner. Hey, we could, that could be what. it. That could be, you could give us like the, my biggest, problem is that I don't I go too hard <laughs> right <laughs> I, I do too much yeah <laughs> yeah it's like I'm trying to really think of a time where like I took a L and it could just be because my mindset I don't really think of it as I don't like when something doesn't go my way I don't think of it as a loss I take it as a lesson like okay yeah what can I do better right. next time like I my biggest my biggest L turned into a win and I'll say it this way because what triggered me to start my career as a filmmaker was me not being booked for any acting roles for a year. There we fucking go. And getting dropped from my agency. There we fucking go. Because that's, that's, that's why <laughs> I think I asked, about it. I'm yeah. like, 
you're just so far from that now, which is great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I ran from that quick. Right, yeah. Oh, but, okay, boom. But yeah, no, that's that's my, th- that's the kind of ulterior motive I always have when I ask that question. Yeah. It's like, I feel like, because I know from my personal experience, like, when I really started going hard at what I do is because I felt like a fucking loser, man. Right. <laughs> like, I was just tired of losing and just like, you know what? Yeah. We're just so going to turn it so up. So, even crazier, uh, it was March 2019. Mm-hmm. So this, okay, further back, the film challenge went up February 2019. Two weeks later, March, like top of March, I got dropped from my agency after five years Mm. because I hadn't booked anything in like 11 months. Wow. Got dropped. Was it acting agency? Yes. Mm -hmm. I got dropped while I was on a callback for a network television show. Oh, bastard. I got dropped via email, right? Via email, they said, we're no longer going to represent you. I said, you guys understand I'm literally at a callback right now for an, so what happens if I book this role because you guys no longer represent me yeah. well we'll represent you through that but then after that blah, mm. blah, blah. so I got dropped via email wow yeah there you go two weeks after I took on this film challenge and I started writing it didn't know anything about filmmaking right so I was like wow okay well cool this is my opportunity to like do something creative I kind of took it ran with it uh I in April 2019, the short film premiered and it won. And then uh, in May of that same year, I put out my second film. We started shooting my second film. Mm. Yeah, I kind of just hit the hit the ground running. Hit the ground running. Yeah, and I kind of took that time to not rush into signing with another agency. I took that time to kind of develop myself as a filmmaker. Right. You know, and I started my production company and was just like, all right, well, I'll just do this. I'll kind of rock out with that for a while. And then later that year in October, I signed with a new agency. Okay, I was going to ask, do you ever... Yeah, I'm with that same agency still now. Oh, the one one that dropped you? No, a different one. Oh, a different one. I got a different one in October Uh, of that, of 2019, and I've been with them ever since. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's what's up. You know, so I can say that. That like my biggest L like turned into like my greatest win. Yeah. Because those agents that dropped me, they it. still follow me on Instagram and they be, they see what I'm doing. Oh yeah. And they yeah. probably like You love it. You love it. You know, like, yeah, man, we could have been making magic. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. They're lost. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. You know, it's everything. business. Yeah, it is. So what would what advice do you have for people who wanna be like Danny Coleman or Issa Rae or just follow their dreams and they feel like they can't necessarily do it because I don't know why. What would you tell them? Just do it, man. Like, like Nike, Nike. Like, like Nike, like there will never be a perfect budget. There will never be a perfect time. When you have the vision, that's all it takes. Like you wouldn't believe the budget I've had for most of my stuff. When you look at it, people are like, what? Yeah. I, I made that with an iPhone. Like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Like I shot a whole short film with an iPhone and people were like, wow, that was iPhone for that was iPhone footage, you know? So I'm like, you can, I mean, granted, that was the only project that we used the iPhone for. And it was just a personal challenge thing. Like, let's shoot this with an iPhone and see what we can do with it. Yeah. But realistically, it's like, you don't really, if you're creative and you trust yourself, you don't really need a ton of money. You know, they all, that, that, you know, that popular saying your net worth is your network, Mm -hmm. you know, find other people who are just as passionate about what they do, who are experts at what they do. And you guys come together. It's never going to be a perfect time. It's never going to be enough money. There's always going to be something that can be better. Always do it anyway. Okay. This is kind of a a hard question because I don't like when people ask me this, but you do a lot of things. Um, you know, acting, writing, you're a business owner. What would you say is like your favorite? Which is the closest to your heart? Like, what would you, if you had to pick one? Oh, thing, making I, money. <laughs> 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 making money. No, on the creative side, uh, closest to my heart. I mean, it could be making money. That's that's making a, money. That's a is, totally valid. Is, is, answer. I mean, making money, whatever <laughs> is going to make me the money. But honestly, it's kind of like, it's so tough because I really enjoy directing because that lets me bring a vision to life. It, it allows my visionary side to kind of like breathe. Right. And like, okay, I seen what I want this to look like. Let's do that again. It looks good. But acting, I love acting. Like, I really enjoy 
I, I play all day. I play around You're a big all day. Kid. <laughs> yeah, like I play all day. I find the joy in everything and anything. Right. Because it's just like, that's your choice. You can be mad about it for the whole day, or you can be mad about it for five minutes and then laugh that shit off and be like, right. all right. But it was funny. Like, yeah. damn, man, you did get played. <laughs> that was funny. You know, like you have to. So for me, I like I like the acting side of it. I will always go back to acting. Just because it's kind of more lighthearted, you think? More lighthearted. It's just get to be, get to explore other parts of yourself and bring them to like because we're directing i'm all business like, right as i'm saying you gotta i'm be like, all business so yeah. much on my set where like i've had friends come on my set and they're like you are definitely a different person when you are behind that camera absolutely yeah because yeah. time is money we are not playing on my set because right. like you said it's, direct, it's like your mind it's like your vision you're showing the world whereas acting is like you're just playing a role so yeah i'm, as as I'm, I'm taking doing direction well, yeah. yeah what um i'm yeah. just curious do you do you what astrology sign are you? Do you know? Do you even care? Sagittarius. Oh, okay. December 4th. December 4th. Now, I don't know my sun, moon, rise, and all right, that. Right, right, right. I don't know. Right, I don't right. know, guys. I don't know what time I was born. At night. <laughs> it was at night, I think. At like nine something, but I don't know the exact minute. Thanks. But I'm a Sag. For sure. You know. All right. Um, okay. I guess, do you have any like final words that you would want to leave with the people? I would say if you have an idea, do it. Go for it. It's not going to be perfect. Stop thinking if someone's going to like it. Stop caring about if your parents are going to approve of it. Like, just do it. And I say that because, like, I remember when I told my mom, like, I'm going to pursue acting. She literally said, that's stupid. Out of her mouth. Yeah. And I, I ne ever since then, I was just like, okay, cool. But I never talked to her about my career now. Mm. And she asked me about it, and I'll tell her, but I keep it super vague because I'm like, right. no, it was still, it's still stupid, bro. It's still bro. stupid, right? It's still, it's stupid, still stupid, bro. Right? I'm getting money off it, like you know, like sometimes people will really want to do stuff, but they let outside sources right. like ruin their their dream. Right, and they can't try to project that on you. Yes, people yeah. are good at projecting. And it's only, and if you let them do it, then this is still your fault. So right, and I'm like, ah, oh, nah, nah, yeah. I can't do it. Worry. Well, I appreciate you, Danny. You got hella wisdom. You want to like do the tell people where to follow you? I can put it on the green screen and all that stuff yeah. too. Yeah. But... Okay. So you can follow me at I am Danny Coleman, and from there you'll get access to all of my other pages. There's only two, but they're in my bio. You know, my story is kind of like my own personal reality show. So I get on there and I talk, or I give like business tips and branding tips, or like whatever post cool music and dance videos not of me but of other people right <laughs> um and then like my page is mostly like social influencer stuff companies pay me to like talk about their products and nice boring stuff oh, that's the life man what are you talking about <laughs> it's a job it's a job <laughs> yeah no nah, you have like a it's like a lifestyle yeah You're like a lifestyle person yeah yeah it's sure. kind of like a whole package of things did you ever were you did you always know that you didn't want a job like i always kinda, knew that you always knew that i always knew that i've been saying i'm going to be rich or i'm going to be famous since i was like five facts and i've like stuck by that like i just want to make a lot of money and then like do whatever i want do cool stuff like right I, I won't say that i'm rebellious but i've i've never in my life wanted to work for anybody right like i've always been like a natural entrepreneur even when I was in like college, when I was in high school, it's kind of like, ah, I'm gonna do my own thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, cool. Well, I appreciate you. Um, I don't have any more questions, so yeah. Taking L's podcast. Taking L's Danny podcast. Danny Coleman, everybody. Yeah. We appreciate you coming through. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I gotta see those episodes now. Yeah, that's why I got, I don't know. That one.